Good evening and welcome to California Today. I'm David Lam. Here's a preview of some of today's stories. Locals are discussing a plan to help San Franciscans get off the streets. They take after a model that's seen success in another state. Both Vice President Kamala Harris and Senator Dianne Feinstein's approval ratings are down. The report comes after voters also expressed increasing discontent with Governor Gavin Newsom. And Disney is planning to build residential communities in Southern California for those who want to live in the Disney paradise permanently. The state is seeing a decline in COVID-19 cases and easing mask restrictions. Today, Governor Gavin Newsom announced the state's new endemic plan. Governor Gavin Newsom announced on Thursday afternoon the state's smarter plan for coexisting with the coronavirus. Uh, as we lean into the future, uh, moving away from a reactive mindset and a crisis mindset uh, to living with this virus, we have all come to understand what was not understood at the beginning of this crisis, that there is no end date. SMARTER is an acronym that lists the seven elements of the plan. Shots, masks, awareness, readiness, testing, education, and RX, which represents evolving and improving treatments. Open California Schools wrote on Twitter, commenting that the governor's plan boils down to a trying-to-be-cute acronym. The move comes a day after California lifted its universal indoor masking mandate. Officials said they plan to update the indoor masking policy for schools in another announcement on February 28th. Nearly two years ago, Newsom imposed the nation's first statewide stay-at-home order, a stark contrast to approaches in Republican states like Florida and Texas that took a more hands-off approach. A day after three members of the San Francisco School Board were recalled, one member decided to resign. He said he was doing so to allow the new assignees to come in as quickly as possible. San Francisco Board of Education Vice President Fauga Moliga announced he is resigning. He informed the superintendent it will take place immediately. In a statement, Moliga said he resigned immediately because he wanted to make sure that whoever is going to be appointed can be brought in as soon as possible as we have some important issues coming up with balancing the budget and selecting a new superintendent. He is planning to focus on family and serve the community. To see him step down today in a huff well, I don't think that he was going to accomplish any more in the next uh, couple of uh, months than he accomplished in the last year and a half. On Tuesday night, San Franciscans overwhelmingly voted to recall Allison Collins, Gabriela Lopez, and Fauga Moliga. Parents were frustrated that members refused to reopen schools during pandemic lockdowns. And I know that if they had had the opportunity they would have recalled the entire school board, holding every member accountable for what we've seen in recent years. The school board has seven members whose terms last four years. If a position is vacant before a term is up, the mayor will appoint a replacement until the next general election. Police made three arrests and recovered $16,000 of stolen retail merchandise in Southern California. The suspects are accused of being involved in a retail theft crime ring that hit stores throughout California and other states. The California Highway Patrol reported that three people were arrested for their connection to a suspected organized retail theft ring. The ring is accused of stealing $16,000 worth of goods and is said to hit stores all throughout California and neighboring states. The CHP says they rented a car last week in the San Francisco Bay Area and drove to San Diego County for the sole purpose of committing retail theft. A representative from a retail store notified authorities that they had spotted the suspects and expected them to commit thefts in their stores. The CHP says the suspects were seen committing thefts in several malls and were eventually stopped in Carlsbad by police after leaving the Carlsbad Outlet Mall. The CHP took them into custody and found stolen merchandise in their car. At least 329 items were recovered worth over $16,000. An investigation is still ongoing. Jason Blair, NTD News, California. Community members are on a mission to tackle homelessness in San Francisco. They plan to follow Texas's model of a campus that's been around for nearly 12 years. On Wednesday evening, the documentary Beyond Homeless, Finding Hope premiered in San Francisco 
Some expert panelists said that more housing alone wouldn't solve the homelessness crisis. There are a lot of great programs around the country that are achieving a lot of good, but the difference with Haven is it's achieving difference at scale. Perot referred to a program called Haven for Hope, which started in San Antonio, Texas, in 2010. In 2021, over 900 people were living on the campus. They call it a transformational campus, and ever since its opening, nearly 6,000 people have transitioned from the campus to permanent housing. An entire city, a city that's twice the size of San Francisco, that had homelessness numbers similar to ours, and they've achieved tremendously positive impact. In San Francisco, the Salvation Army plans to do something similar by redeveloping six of its properties in SF. A director with the Salvation Army shares statistics based on Los Angeles rehab centers. People who complete a program for six months only have a likelihood of 10% chance of. Continuing to live a life of sobriety, when you wrap them with support, like life skills training, like workforce development, for two to three years,、uh, we've seen that same number jump up to 90 percent. According to its website, Beyond Homeless is a movement created by a group of organizations. They believe that by treating the root causes of homelessness on an individual basis, they can help people move off the streets. The initiative is still in its early stages. David Lamb, NTD News, San Francisco. A new poll found low approval ratings among Californians for Senator Dianne Feinstein and Vice President Kamala Harris. Many voters disapproved of their job performances. The new poll by the UC Berkeley Institute of Governmental Studies and the Los Angeles Times surveyed close to 9,000 registered voters across the state. The poll found that voters disapproved of Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein's job performance by a 19-point margin. 49% disapproved and just 30% approved, dropping five points since May. Among registered Democratic voters, Feinstein earned a 45% approval rating, and Republican voters gave a 7% approval. Vice President Kamala Harris also fared poorly in her home state. 46% of voters disapproved of her job performance compared to the 38% that approved. Voters are evenly divided in their rating of President Biden. The assessments of both Biden and Harris dropped sharply from last summer, in line with their falling poll numbers nationwide. Mark De Camille, director of the poll, said the lagging approval of Democrats Feinstein and Harris stand out. Among the broadly pessimistic mood of Californian voters, two thirds of voters believe the country is headed in the wrong direction. California ends mask mandates and joins several states that recently did the same. Residents say they were tired of having to wear them. Store owners say mask wearing is now a choice for each customer to make. You know, some people want that protection. So it's their choice if they come in and they want to wear the mask now, but、uh, some people don't want to. They're just tired of it all, and they're ready to come in and just do shopping. Well, in my line of work, we still have to wear them.、Um, it's the company policy. But yes, for the for the most part, we'll, I will take it off and, and leave it off. I'm ready to be done with it. Bakersfield, California residents and business owners seem relieved over the mandate end. They say they want to feel like things are back to normal. Some aren't confident the mandate will remain in place. They think it could be reimposed if CCP virus cases start to rise again. A store owner in Bakersfield is keeping his sign advising customers to wear masks in place. He says the masking requirement has changed so many times already. And coming up, a sea lion is returned to the sea after being found along the side of a busy highway in San Diego. And California's high-speed rail released a report about its economic benefits to the state, but one analyst says the project is just an excuse for government spending. That and more here on NTD News. Citrus producers are feeling the sour sting of the slow supply chain. Not only are exports down, but some crops are rotting inside the shipping containers, according to one Central Valley farmer. Oranges and grapefruits are rotting inside shipping containers as U.S. ports delay exports. Delays from the supply chain crisis are leading to the citrus fruit spoiling. 
One farm in Bakersfield has been dealing with shipping delays and equipment shortages since December. Derek Vaughn, partner at Johnston Farms, said the fruit can be two weeks old before getting on the ships. On top of that, the volume of fruit they're exporting this year is half of normal. Vaughn said Australia, New Zealand, and South America make up their import customers. He added that before the supply chain slowdown, containers would travel for 30 days. Now it takes around 48. California's shipping exports fell by about $2 billion from May to September last year, according to the University of California's Giannini Foundation of Agricultural Economics. The study said that the supply chain crisis has caused more losses for California's agriculture industry than the 2018 U.S.-China trade war. The report dubbed the situation Container Geddon. Tesla cars are facing a safety probe again, this time over claims that some cars unexpectedly hit the brakes while driving at highway speeds, something called phantom braking. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says the models in question were equipped with Tesla's autopilot system, which lets the car steer and brake automatically. According to the agency, people told them their cars came to a brake without any warning, and often more than once in a single trip. No crashes or injuries have been reported in connection with the complaints. It's not the first time the NHTSA has investigated Tesla's autopilot system. Last summer, it launched a probe after several cases where Tesla's crashed into parked emergency vehicles. California's high-speed rail project announced the economic benefits the project is having for workers throughout the state. But one analyst said the project is a prime example of government waste, with certain groups maintaining the project just to absorb funding. The High Speed Rail Authority announced on Wednesday the economic impacts its project is having on the state. The announcement comes after the authority released its biennial financial report last Tuesday. The report wrote the project contributed $840 million to employment income and $2.2 billion of economic output. The report predicted that workers will earn $5.2 billion over the life of the project and create $13.7 billion in economic activity. But the projected economic activity is less than the current price tag, over seven times less. The rail authority estimated the project will cost $105 billion. Commentator John Seiler wrote that the rail project has been 14 years of government waste. Back in 2008, Seiler said the project would exist only to spend billions as voters supported the railway initiative. The original cost was $40 billion. He observed that costs are rising by roughly 5% every year, and that the project is on life support from the federal government. Seiler wrote, Contractors, the unions, the politicians, won't give up on the project so long as the federal spigot is open. The Biden administration restored $1 billion in federal funds for the railway that the Trump administration had canceled. Newsom additionally proposed $15 billion for infrastructure in the state's coming budget, with part of that going to the rail project. Virtual reality company Roblox didn't impress investors in its latest quarter, and it's the first major metaverse company to go public. We talked to some experts to see how having a screen centimeters from our face can affect eyesight. Entity's Chenny Wu investigates. Shares of metaverse company Roblox plummeted and remained low after they missed estimates. Their net loss of 25 cents per share was worse than estimates of 13 cents per share. Roblox is the first major metaverse company to go public. We need time. Amir Borzorgzadeh is the CEO of Virtuleap, which creates brain training games. Borzorgzadeh says developers require many years before they can achieve Mark Zuckerberg's vision that the metaverse will be the successor to the mobile internet. And there are many obstacles to that vision, such as the current technology and health concerns. What can you play on a smartphone? That's pretty much what you can play on a VR device right now. Borzuk Zade says the graphics are currently very limited because developers have to factor in spatial input. And there's no way you can compare them to the graphics on a PS5. Toggling between the real world and a virtual world today, they're very uh, clunky, they're very cumbersome. Bob Bilbrook is the CEO of Capture, a business 
business consultancy. Bill Brooks says headset weight is another factor, but that the technology is constantly improving. Groups like Qualcomm and others are working on chips that can process a lot faster also. And as VR headset sales increase, health concerns abound. At the current stage that we are on, these devices shouldn't be used, in my opinion, longer than an hour per day. In fact, I would say like these are great devices for 20 minutes per session. Until we get better devices, motion sickness and eye strain are some reported problems. In regards to the impact on eye health, one expert says we shouldn't set off uh, any major alarms about VR. Dr. Harry Bonesack is the president of the Canadian Association of Optometrists. Bonesack says VR isn't necessarily worse for your eyes than your phone. I know that all, all of our mothers told us, you know, don't sit too close to the TV. And now we've got a, uh, you know, we've got a screen literally, uh, you know, uh, you know, a fraction of an inch from our eyeballs. Um, is that harmful? I don't think we can say that it is. I think uh, it's likely that it's not harmful. Bonesack says the blue light coming from the screens is in itself a cause for concern, and it's really what the eyes themselves are doing that may cause strain. Chenny Wu, NTD News. Gas prices hit a record high in the state on Wednesday. While the governor said he is considering pausing an increase in the gas tax, amid the surplus, some, de some Democratic leaders say the funds are needed. Gasoline hit $4.72 per gallon in California on Wednesday, according to AAA. The pump prices are now at a record high for the Golden State. At the same time, Democratic state leaders said they don't want to stop an increase on taxes, according to AP. The expected $500 million from a gas tax increase is expected to be used on transit operations. Democratic Assembly Speaker Anthony Rendon said that without a tax increase, it could potentially jeopardize a tremendous amount of jobs in this state. Senate Republican leader Scott Wilk, on the other hand, said Sacramento Democrats are tone deaf if they think people don't need a break at the pump. According to the Federation of Tax Administrators, California has the second highest gas tax in the country at 51.1 cents per gallon. Newsom suggested stopping the tax increase for a year in January. He said that the state could scrape the lost funds from the state's $45.7 billion surplus. Assembly Republican leader James Gallagher wrote in a statement saying that the state won't ease that burden while we're sitting on a $40 billion surplus is astounding. You've heard of people getting lost at sea, but this time a sea creature got lost on land. A 250-pound sea lion has been returned to the sea after being found along the side of a busy road. And experts have no idea how it got there. A male sea lion was shepherded across Highway 94 in San Diego by passersby on January 7th. The California Highway Patrol was alerted and rescued it with the help of SeaWorld's rescue team. He was a little bit light, you know, you could see a little bit of his ribs and stuff, and so we wanted to make sure that he was eating well and, and gaining weight as he should. Uh, medically, he was perfectly fine. After a full month of rehabilitation, it was released back to the ocean on Wednesday. The sea lion reportedly acted aggressively toward its helpers, pulling itself in the direction of the oncoming traffic in defiance of its instructions. Rescuers then used nets to stop the marine mammal before transporting it by truck to a rescue center for a health evaluation and recovery. After the team agreed it was in great shape and behaving normally again, they agreed to release it back to the ocean. It's really neat when we can get an animal in that needs help, we rehabilitate it, and then we take it back to its, its natural home, give it a second chance at life, and uh, be able to help those animals is really an honor for the team. This sea lion has been tagged prior to the rescue mission last month, as he had shown up in strange locations since early November 2021. The tags help provide information about where an animal has been and its past medical history. Want a little more Disney in your life? Or maybe a lot more? The company announced on Wednesday it is planning to build residential communities in Southern California for those who do not want to leave the happiest place on Earth. Disney announced it is planning to build new neighborhoods called Story Living by Disney. It's a kind of real-life never-never land. Each area will be designed differently that aligns with Disney's branding and service. The community will span about 24 acres around an oasis in the city of Rancho Mirage in Coachella Valley where Walt Disney once lived. In a statement, the chairman for Disney Parks Experiences and Products said they are developing ways to bring the magic of Disney to people, expanding storytelling to story living. 
The statement said they can't wait to welcome residents where they can live their lives to the fullest. Trained Disney cast members will provide guest service to operate the residential communities. There will also be neighborhoods for residents over the age of 55. There will be a club membership for special experiences year round, like wellness programming, live performances, cooking classes, seminars, and more. Disney did not announce when they will start construction or when it will be completed by. Neither did they announce the expected price. Now to Entity's Thomas Christian for an update on sports. I'm Thomas Christian, giving you the California Today Sports Roundup. Tiger Woods said on Wednesday he was not recovering as quickly as he would like from the leg injuries he sustained in a car crash last February, but remained confident about returning to the PGA Tour one day and welcomed the fight it would take. Woods, who is host of the PGA Tour's Genesis Invitational this week in Pacific Palisades, California, that benefits his TGF Foundation continues working on strengthening activities, but does not work seriously with his long clubs. Woods was a non-playing host last year at Riviera, where two days after the final round, the vehicle he was driving veered across opposite lanes, collided with a road sign, and rolled several times before coming to a rest. The accident resulted in a three-week hospitalization, during which he faced the possibility of having his right leg amputated followed by three months where he was confined to a hospital-type bed at his home in South Florida. In his first public appearance since the accident, Wood said last November ahead of the Hero World Challenge where he was the tournament host that he had no desire to be a full-time player on the PGA Tour again, but hoped to play here and there. Two weeks later, Woods competed with his 12-year-old son in a laid-back 36-hole team event featuring major champions and a family member where the state of his game impressed onlookers. Woods, whose tally of 15 career major titles trails only 18 won by Jack Nicklaus, said playing with his son in an event where competitors used carts did not make him think a comeback was around the corner. Woods capped one of the most remarkable comebacks in professional sports when, at the age of 43, he won the Masters in 2019 after enduring years of surgery and personal problems that convinced many the best golfer of his generation was done. Woods, whose 82 PGA Tour wins are tied for most all time, made clear that his competitive playing days were not over. Elated Rams coaches and players basked in the glow of their Super Bowl championship during a parade through the streets of Los Angeles on Wednesday, when they said they were prepared to run it back again next season. The star-studded team won its first championship as the Los Angeles Rams on their home field on Sunday with a thrilling 23-20 come-from-behind victory over the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm standing here in this city that knows nothing but championships. We're out here celebrating this championship. Kobe's a part of this. This is the, He belongs here. And I'll tell you what, he set the standard. All I know Get back to work, let's run it back. That is hoping to capture a Los Angeles fan base loyal to the Lakers and the Dodgers and used to winning. LA Mayor Eric Garcetti presented keys to the city to Donald, Stafford, and Cup. As always, I'm Thomas Christian and thanks for tuning in. And that's all that we have for you tonight. We'd love to have you back on California Today every weekday at 8.30 p.m. Feel free to let us know if you have any news tips for our show. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and our website. I'm David Lamb. We'll see you next time.